I gotta grab the net. Oh, must be a rainbow. Yeah, it's kind of all over the place, huh? Oh no, it's a little king. Just try not to hit you in the head. It's yeah, just watch the motor too. Got him. Wow. Yeah, little king. Little king. We'll take that. At a new port this morning. First one. In the bag. Sun's not even up yet. Oh, we got another fish on. Okay. Oh. oh yeah, we got another one on, Greg. This is on a spoon again. I think he's still on there. If he's on there, it ain't a big one. Man, is it still there? Yeah, it's just small. Oh. I got a lot of reeling to do because we got 150 foot copper here. This is coming in a lot easier than those 20 pounders we got last time. We're out of Algoma. We decided that we were gonna try a different port today. Head a little further north than we normally do and oh, we got our second fish on of the morning so far. Just kind of getting set up here. Little Kings. Hey, good, good for the grill though. Second fish of the morning. We're fishing spoons today too. This is actually a moonshine magnum spoon. This is a green flounder pounder. The first fish actually came on a, a bait very similar to this one. It's a flounder pounder pattern, um, just with some different colors on there. But these moonshine spoons are definitely a staple. They're very popular out here on Michigan for uh, kings like this one, a lot of rainbow trout. Uh, you know, we run a lot of like orange colors up high and they do really well for those fish. But awesome spoon pattern here. Um, this is one of my favorites along with the blue flounder pounder and the red one. These spoons have produced a lot of fish over the years and that's a good, Good little king there to throw on the grill. So we got two fish in the box. You guys would be proud of me, check this out. We got a brand new Coleman cooler from Walmart and we got two fish in there already. And this is lunch, this has gotta go in the cooler. <laughs> All right, Greg, let's get those rods back out there. Let's catch some more. Greg, grab the camera. Oh yeah, here we go. This one will be a little bigger than the last couple. Ah, uh, just let it go. Let it go. Here we go. Now we're hooked up on a better one. Oh yeah. That's what we love to hear. We're gonna stop this guy at 90. Check out that moon, the sun's not up yet. We're kinda... Oh, the moon's right in your Oh, what do we got? 453. Show them the graph right now. That is what you wanna see when you come out on Michigan, no matter what port you're out of. Whenever you see fish top to bottom like that, you know it's gonna be a good morning. I don't think this is, is gonna be a super tanker, but it's gonna be bigger than the last couple that we just put in the box. Last time we came out here, you guys seen us catch a ton of kings, and today we are pretty much specifically targeting those kings. We're running a lot of uh, deeper stuff. We don't have too many high lines out today. Actually, we don't have any lead core in the boat. Oh, there we go. Look, making a big run. Now we don't have any lead core setups in the boat today. We're strictly fishing for big kings. We got two downriggers set up with flash or fly combos. We got two dipsies set up. One has a spoon on it, which caught a fish already this morning. And this one has a flash or fly combo on it. And then we're running two copper setups. We have a 150 copper setup and we have a 300 copper setup. And those are all practically pretty deep lines. I think the highest line that I got set out right now is gonna be my downrigger over here at 47 feet down. Um, and then this smaller dipsy on this side is gonna be a little higher too as well. But 
Everything else, we're basically running 60 foot or deeper today, trying to target some bigger kings that they've been getting up here. Fish kind of migrated, this thing's pulling again. Fish kind of migrated a little further north than we had been getting them down in Manitowoc and Two Rivers. So we're basically just following the fish up. Never fished up here before, first time out of Algoma, and just kind of wanted to come up here, try something new, give it a go, and see what we can make happen. And so far, we got two in the box. Oh, it's still pulling. Gained some ground on them though. We got the old live scope unit. We stopped catching fish here for a little bit and I can get that set up on one of these riggers and see if we can capture a fish coming up to bite a rigger this morning because that would be absolutely awesome. It'd be a little bigger than the last one. Well, good old shark fin. The old shark fin. Flip them in there, Greg. No, we got a problem. Yep, dip underneath them. Just dip underneath them. Another net. Here, give me the net. Oh, oh, I think give me so. the net. All right, back up. I will. We'll get him. Oh, he's in the down rigger rod. He's in the down rigger rod. Okay. This needs to go under here. That's a little better one. Probably, uh, you know, that three-year-old mark. A lot of we got a ton of these last time we were out down in Manitowoc, and uh, yeah, that's a good one to pull on the dipsy. But I'm not gonna spend too much time with this. I got two lines that need to get back in the water, so we're gonna throw them in the cooler up here. Really gonna love having this cooler. I think today we'll be able to take ice out of here if we have to. But it's just gonna be a lot nicer having this than having to put them in the live well. Right now we're actually in between Sturgeon Bay and Algoma and the bite kind of slowed down a little bit. We got a full moon that's really charging these fish up overnight. And as soon as that sun peaked out, uh, the bite got really tough. I do have Garmin Live Scope along. I've been getting a ton of questions and a ton of comments on if I can use Garmin Live Scope to salmon fish. And the answer is yes. I brought the old ice unit out today. The cool thing about having a portable unit like this is you can take it out on the boat with you. And uh, if you notice the stick here, I got a summit stick behind me. I got that mounted to a ram mount here and I'm simply just hanging it over the side of the boat. And what's cool about this is I can actually see my downrigger ball right on the live scope unit. So I got everything kind of dialed in and set perfectly right now where I can see my downrigger ball and I can also see that flasher fly behind the ball too as well. And we've been watching fish come up to that flasher fly combo pretty much all morning and the bite is just really, really tough right now. Um, we are seeing quite a few fish on the live scope unit, um, just not a whole lot of commitment. It is super neat to be able to watch these fish come up. I've been adjusting my speed back and forth, slowing down, speeding up, um, doing a lot of S turns and stuff like that, trying to trigger these bites, but it's just getting really tough. I really wanted to show you guys the setup and how I'm running live scope on the boat this morning. It can help you out in a lot of scenarios where you may have fish following your bait, not committing, maybe you can do something, change up your presentation, whether that's speeding up, slowing down, actually taking it out of the water, switching up your bait selection, um, anything like that can that can help trigger a bite um, is stuff that this live scope unit can help you kind of dial in. Fish, fish, fish. Right there. Oh yeah. Dang, I bet if I would have had it on the rigger, we would have saw it hit. You wanna reel this one in? Yeah, I found it. It's at the surface? All right, I'm gonna grab the net. Another good king, Greg. We got him. Oh. Wow, he's heavy. That's not a bad fish right there. As I was trying to find this downrigger that just got popped, as I was trying to find it in there, it got hit. So I wish I would have found it a little sooner because we probably would have got pretty cool footage of this fish coming up and smoking that, smoking that bait. But let me throw this fish in the cooler and I want to show you guys that setup that that fish just came on. Oh yeah. 
Nice, four fish, baby. This is something I'm pretty excited about. This is a brand new flasher from Moonshine. And uh, I'm actually running a couple of these this morning. This is actually a chrome-based flasher with some uh, foil tape on the back. But the cool thing about these flashers is there's actually a, like a Moonshine Glow insert on these flashers. So you can actually take these inserts out and replace them with different colors. Um, they just slide right out the back. They have these little tabs that you just kind of push over to lock them in, but super, super neat. They have a ton of different colors, ton of diff different styles uh, with you know the, the typical moonshine paint patterns on these. Um, you can switch them in and out. I'm actually running another one with like the bloody nose pattern on it. And uh, yeah, I'm really excited to catch some fish on these. The idea behind them is absolutely awesome. Um, this morning when we set these out, I glowed these things up and just watching them go back in the water was absolutely awesome. So if you're not familiar with these moonshine flashers, definitely grab a few. They've proven to catch fish already this morning, and I'm super excited to see if we get some more fish on these today. But I'm running that flasher down to a little fly here, again, with that treble hook that has that little bit of resin dip in there. So if you didn't watch the last video, it helps basically keep the line from getting tangled inside the shank of those hooks um, to the point where you could possibly lose some fish. But I'm gonna get this set back up and hopefully find this in that live scope unit so we can see some live action under the water. Wow, well, it is freaking warm back on mainland here, but we just got all our fish cleaned up here at the cleaning station in Algoma. Actually, they have a really nice cleaning station here. Uh, it's very similar to Two Rivers with a conveyor and everything, but um, I really enjoy like the, the flat surface for cleaning fish, and they definitely got that going on here in Algoma. It was a fun day out on the water. Only managed four fish this morning, unfortunately. That full moon has a lot to do with that with that bite just kind of dying midday. But the, the bite before the sun came up was absolutely phenomenal. Greg and I, I mean, within 30 minutes, we had those four fish. It happened kind of real fast, boom, boom, boom. So kind of wishing we would have got out a little earlier than we did today, but Algoma was a little further of a ride for us. So we didn't want to wake up super early. Um, still fun to get out here. Got some nice kings in the boat and we're gonna be eating good again. Greg actually made some salmon dip uh, with the salmon he caught last time and that stuff was very, very good. So if you guys would like to see a video on like a catch and cook or how to make something like that, um, definitely leave it in the comments below. Maybe on the next video, I could do some sort of catch and cook for you guys. But hopefully you enjoyed this one. It was fun getting live scope um, in the boat today uh, to use on some of the downriggers and stuff here. I know we didn't get anything actually eating, unfortunately. I just missed the bite um, that we got on the one downrigger that I could have been really close to having. But using live scope like that, I'm definitely gonna use a little more and hopefully try to capture something here in the near future. Um, for you guys because I know you guys would absolutely love that but let me know if you use live scope for salmon fishing down in the comments below and if there's any better way that you have found um, to use it that being said we're gonna kind of get everything packed up here I gotta trim my motor up yet and then uh, yeah we're gonna head home for the day also don't forget I am running guided trips out on Lake Michigan if you are interested in getting out I'm kind of running out of dates uh, but there are still some available on my website I will leave that linked down below thanks again so much for watching as always keep living your dream and we'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace.